Good morning. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us for worship today. A few announcements as we get started. The first is one I'm going to pass around. So um, this upcoming Saturday, our youth are hosting a spaghetti dinner fundraiser. Um, and so this will be Saturday, April 13th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. The spaghetti dinner portion is a free will offering um, in support of our youth who are attending the youth gathering this upcoming summer. Um, there's gonna be spaghetti and meatballs and salad and bread and all sorts of deliciousness and fellowship. Um, we're also going to have a silent auction for the desserts. And we're getting desserts donated by local bakeries and grocery stores. Um, so y'all can come and bid on desserts if you want to go in on one as a table for your dessert for the night or you just want to have a dessert all to yourself and take it home with you. That is fine too. Um, so it is going to be a very fun event. We're asking for um, reservations so we know how much food we ought to prepare. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pass around the sign-up sheet. I'll start it on the end. And if y'all could just help me out and make sure it gets around. Thank you, Nancy. Mm -hmm. All right, other announcements. Um, thank you to everybody who helped with our Easter worship services last Sunday and our Good Friday service that we hosted here at Grace. Um, it was a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Both services were meaningful in, in their own ways as they ought to be. Um, and so thank you to everybody who helped with those, who helped distribute eggs out there, prepared the eggs for the kids in the egg hunt, everybody who brought food for the breakfast, our youth who prepared pancakes for us and all of the other stuff that happened with breakfast. Um, thank you. Let's uh, give ourselves a round of applause. It was a good weekend. I know I am still recovering from all of our Easter festivities, so I think some of, uh, of you might be too. All right, my last announcement, I think, as we get started, is that this week at GICC, we were learning the letter U, which I got to tell you, is not an easy one to come up with a Bible lesson on. Um, so we learned about unlikely disciples, um, that the people Jesus called were not the people you may have expected to become followers of a rabbi, um, but Jesus saw something in them and called them. So the kiddos helped me put together a felt board story of the calling of Simon and Andrew. Um, and then we colored in our, um, our fish symbol, which is of course one of our beloved symbols for followers of Jesus. Um, so we had a good lesson and the kids had a lot of fun putting stuff on the felt board. And even though all of the felt pieces feel exactly the same, they wanted to feel all of them, <laughs> just in case. Um, but it was a really, it was a good lesson. So thank you all again for your support of that part of our ministry here at Grace. I think that's all of my announcements as we get started today. So if you all would join me in a moment of meditation, that we might prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. <laughs> Please stand as you feel comfortable. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life, alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. 
We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life, alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And Please share a sign of peace with one another.
as you all return to your seats, I'd like to invite our kids to come up for the children's time. Come on up, boy. Jackson, come on. Hey. Yes, come on up. Oh, not that far. Oh. Okay, well, thank you all for coming up today. So today, I need your help with a challenge, okay? So, Jackson, do you see all of these blocks around the baptismal font? Yeah? Boy, do you see them? Okay. So, I need you to grab some blocks and build a tower, okay? Do you think you can do it? Let's build, build over here, away from the candle, okay? All right, come get some blocks. Okay, get some blocks, boy. Take some blocks, Jackson. You want to take them over by Mallory? Go ahead. Take them over. You're going to build it right here, Jackson? Yeah. All right. So go ahead, Jackson. You got some blocks over here. Boyd, you got some? Okay, Jackson, build your tower. <laughs> okay, here's some more. <laughs> You got it, Jackson? You got it. Good. <laughs> okay. You're going to put that one there? Yeah? Whoa. All right. You want to do another one? You want to do another one. Okay. <laughs> it's so many. Okay, go ahead, Boyd. <laughs> All right, well, let's look at our towers. So you two built two towers, right? And they are pretty tall. But do you think if we put all of our blocks together, do you think we could build an even taller tower if we combine them into one? Yeah. You think so? OK. Let's see. Let's put them together. Yes, OK. Like this, good work. Boy, go ahead. Get him on there. <laughs> go ahead, get him on there, Jackson. Let's see how tall we can make it. Is it almost taller than you? Oh, it's definitely taller than Boyd. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so come stand in front of our... I know, that's not part of the tower, Boyd. <laughs> there we go. Come stand over here, okay? Come stand in front of our tower here. Is it even taller than you? Yeah? Yeah. So let's come sit over here and we can look at our tower. <laughs> When we put all of our blocks together, did we build an even taller tower than when we built two separate towers? Is it even taller now? Is it taller than you? Is it taller than you, boy? Yeah, it is, right? And so in one of our Bible stories today, we're going to hear <laughs> about how the early church learned that when they put all of their stuff together, they were able to do really, really amazing things, even more amazing than when they kept everything to themselves. So when you put all of your blocks together, we were able to build a really, really tall tower. Yeah. Yeah, you've built a really big tower before? Your daddy's helped you do that? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> very good, Jackson. Right? So that's what I want you to learn today, is that when we put all of everything that we have together, we're able to do really, really special things. Like we could build an even bigger tower than if we do it by ourselves. Okay? So can you all say a prayer with me before we go back to our seats? Yeah? Okay. Dear God. Dear God. But I, but I did say the dad and the mommy dress up. 
Okay, can you tell me this wonderful story after worship, Jackson? Yeah, can we tell it later? Yeah. Okay, sorry, thank you, buddy. You wanna do our prayer? Yeah. Okay, dear God, <laughs> thank you for everything you give us. Help us to share what we have for the good of all. We love you, God. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seat, okay? All right. You can proceed. We're going to move our tower really quick. <laughs> A reading from the book of Acts on the second Sunday of Easter. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but every one they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave the testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet and was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in reading the responsive reading of 133 Psalm. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head, flowing down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon flowing down upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing life forevermore. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you feel comfortable for the reading of the gospel. to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish officials, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, Jesus showed him his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When Jesus had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with the other disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told Thomas, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger and the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it 
in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to Thomas, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you may be seated. Between our gospel lesson from John and our reading from Acts, we see a drastic change. In Acts, the whole community of believers are living together in unity. They hold all things in common. They have pooled all their resources to serve and care for one another so that there is not one needy person amongst them. As Acts tells us, they are of one heart and soul. It is this just beautiful picture of unity and a courageous living of faith. And it is drastically different from how the disciples are living in our reading from John. The doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear. The disciples are so afraid that they have locked themselves away. They are far from living courageously, and they are far from living faithfully. It is not just Thomas who has been disbelieving about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mary Magdalene already told all of the disciples, including Thomas, that Jesus was alive. She said to them, I have seen the Lord. And she told them everything that Jesus said to tell them. And far, far from responding to Mary's witness with faith, the disciples have responded with fear. In our gospel lesson, the disciples are a far cry from the courageous, faithful community we see in Acts. Which makes me wonder, what changed? How did they go from this fearful, faithless group hiding away behind locked doors to this boldly courageous group living in faith and unity with one another? What changed? Well, in our gospel lesson, we see one of the most important changes. The disciples have their own experience with Jesus. They have seen Jesus for themselves, and they come to believe. And then, in having their own experience with Jesus, they feel compelled to share their experience with others. And so they immediately do so with Thomas. The moment Thomas comes back in, the disciples say to him, we have seen the Lord. They have their own experience with Jesus and they immediately want to share it with someone else. Having experienced new life with Jesus, the disciples want to share that new life with everyone else they meet. And here, I think the disciples are starting to understand their new purpose. You see, up to this point, their purpose has really been 
to follow and learn from Jesus. They were disciples, students of Jesus. But without Jesus there to teach them, they don't know who they are or what they are supposed to do. Without their rabbi, their teacher, how can they be disciples, students? They need a new identity, and it is one that Jesus has already given them. They are apostles now. They are the sent ones. And Jesus reminds them of this identity in our gospel lesson by giving them the breath of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will guide them in sharing their experience of Jesus with others. And this will become their purpose, to share their faith with others so that everyone they meet gets to have an experience with Jesus too. Suddenly, they have a new identity and a new purpose. And this shift in identity and purpose is what shifts them from living fearfully and faith faithlessly locked away to living this holy, courageous life of unity, of faith together. They know their new identity and purpose. And then, in knowing their identity and purpose, they begin to look at their resources differently. The community in Acts recognizes that together, they have an abundance of resources. They actually have more than enough resources to accomplish what God has called them to do in this moment. By identifying all of their resources and then being willing to share them all together, they are able to meet the needs of every single person in their community. This is an extraordinary act of faith. It is grounded in their belief that God has given them everything they need if they would just recognize these abundant resources of God and share them all together. Now, I do not imagine that this was an easy process in Acts. In fact, just after this story of the, uh, the followers of Jesus sharing all of their resources together, we learned that there were some people who withheld information about their resources because they did not want to share them with everyone. We also read that there were times that resources were shared with some members of the community, but not with everybody. These stories of people hoarding their resources do not end well. We find that God is displeased about this hoarding and scarcity mindset. This calling to courageously recognize and share resources in order to follow God's purpose it does not always go smoothly. The people do struggle with it. But when the people have faith in God's abundance, they recognize the resources that God has given them, and they boldly share them with one another, and the results are miraculous. They create a community of one heart and soul, where the needs of all are met. This is nothing short of a miracle. It is a courageous act of faith in God's abundance. Siblings, this boldly courageous, faithful community in Acts is not the only community that God has blessed with an abundance of resources. Just like this community in Acts, 
God has given us all the resources that we need to accomplish the purpose God is calling us to. Through our storytelling sessions, we discerned that we are a community of faith who believe in God's grace. We have experienced God's grace through steadfast love, inclusive belonging, and living hope. That is our identity. That is who we are. That is the experience of Jesus Christ that we share in common as a community of faith. And having had that experience of the grace of God, it is our calling to help others have that experience too. In John, the disciples take on a new identity as apostles. That is who they are. And once they experience the risen Christ, it becomes their calling to help others have that experience too. Once they know their purpose, they start to recognize the absolute abundance of resources God has given them. And they share those resources in order to accomplish the purpose God has called them to. They are transformed from this faithless and fearful community to a community of bold, courageous faith and purpose. It is our calling here at Grace to share the experience of God's grace through steadfast love, inclusive belonging, and living hope with one another, with our neighbors, with creation. Now that we know our purpose, it's time for us to recognize the absolute abundance of resources that God has given us and to share those resources in order to accomplish the purpose God has called us to. Next Sunday, we are going to take some of our worship time to recognize and share our resources with one another so that we can start seeing how God is calling us to use those resources to accomplish our purpose of living God's grace through steadfast love, inclusive belonging, and living hope with one another, our neighbors, and creation. This activity that we are going to share next Sunday is one that I, I love, and I'm really excited to share it with you all next week because it really demonstrates the absolute abundance of what God has given us. It shows us that when we recognize our resources and when we bring them all together as a community of faith, we find that God has already given us everything we need to fulfill the mission that God has called us to. Now, if the idea of identifying your own gifts and resources, your own talents, your own knowledge, your own connections, if that feels intimidating to you, then I encourage you to work on the abundance worksheet that I handed out a few weeks ago, and I printed some more copies uh, in case y'all lost yours. They're out on the table in the narthex. This worksheet helps spark some ideas of what you might share next week in worship as we write down the abundant resources God has given us. These are things like knowing how to cook, knowing how to do woodworking, having a sewing machine for projects, um, the organizations that you belong to, that you are passionate about, being good with kids, being good with some of our older members. These are not just financial resources, but every single gift that God has given you, everything that is in your heart, in your mind, in your hands that you could share that you could put to use together in our community to accomplish the mission God has given us. 
our activity next Sunday is truly an act of faith because it is grounded in our belief that God has given us everything we need. If we would just recognize those gifts, passions, and talents and bring them all together in unity in our community of faith. The community in Acts was able to live a courageous, miraculous faith because they recognized God's abundance and they shared all that they had with one another to accomplish the purpose that God had called them to. God has made us a community that believes in God's grace. We experience God's grace through steadfast love, inclusive belonging, and living hope. That's the identity that God has given us. That is our shared experience of Jesus Christ. Our purpose is to live God's grace now with one another, with our neighbors, and with creation. Siblings, I believe that we can and we will accomplish the purpose that God has given us when we recognize the absolute abundance of the gifts and passions and resources that God has given us. When together, we bring those gifts and we use them to do God's work. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you draw near to the disciples, draw us near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide flowers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person, that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Your congregation cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, and other staff, administrators, and volunteers who facilitate Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear us as we offer to you silently or aloud our joys, burdens, and all that is in our hearts and mind. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we recommend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand as you feel comfortable. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit, with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. This morning, we'll take communion gathered around the altar. You're invited to stand or to kneel as you prefer. If you need a gluten-free option, please indicate that to me as I come to you, and I'll bring you our gluten-free tray. Uh, today, if you want to commune with wine, that is the darker liquid on the outside of our tray. And if you prefer to commune with juice, that is the lighter liquid on the inside of the tray. Most importantly, as we gather for communion today, we remember whose meal this is. This is the meal of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Jesus invites and welcomes all to share in this meal of Holy Communion. So today, all are welcome. All are invited to share communion. I invite our choir members to come forward first.
Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. We ask that all our guests and members who are attending in person today, please print your names on the clipboards found on the ends of the rows and then pass those back to the rows behind you until everyone has had a chance to record their attendance. If you're new to Grace and would like to be added to the email list, go ahead and provide your email address and check that box that's there for the email list. We also invite you to visit our website at gracenola.org. It's where you'll find the links to sign up for emails or give online. We also encourage you to check out the announcements and events. In conjunction with Earth Day on April 22nd, we're continuing our collection throughout the month of April for the Green Project. You can donate any time this month by dropping your dollar bills and coins in the chuck it bucket found in the narthex or by clicking the Give Now button on our website and selecting Chuck It in the Bucket from the fun list. And Pastor Katie told you all about the spaghetti dinner that's happening on Saturday. If you want to join us and you're not here today in person to sign the sign-up sheet, go ahead and email Pastor Katie at pastorkatie at gracenola.org to reserve your seat. And don't forget to uh, join us on Saturday for that great occasion where we support our youth that are attending the conference. On April 21st, we're hosting a neighborhood cleanup event. We will have a potluck lunch immediately following worship. So last week, I think I said we were serving lunch, but we're kind of putting the onus on you. You need to bring something. So uh, please do bring something for the potluck and then join us to clean up the neighborhood following the potluck. Grace family members and friends are all invited and encouraged to attend. And thanks to a grant from Thrivent, we have supplies, food, and t-shirts for all our participants. So. We hope you'll join us. Today is the first Sunday of the month, and we want to acknowledge all those born in the month of April. April babies tend to always see the lighter side and spread joy wherever they go. Their infectious laughter and playful spirit make them a joy to be around. So you guys need to remember that when you get mad at me for my stupid jokes. I can't help it. I'm an April baby. If you were born during the month of April, please stand wherever you are so we can celebrate you with our rendition of Happy Birthday. Hit it, Norman. <laughs> Happy birthday, everybody. I don't know about the rest of you, but I turned 29 on Friday. <laughs> All right. And folks, we want to wish a happy anniversary to Kevin and Yvonne Johnson, who are celebrating 23 years today. Bill White and Nellie Flores with 10 years on the 11th. David and Amy Hoffman with 44 years on the 12th. And Bill and Karen Hazlaris, who will celebrate 39 years on the 27th. <laughs> Collectively, you have 116 years of wedded bliss. That's amazing. It's like George Burns always says, love is a lot like a backache. It doesn't show up on an x-ray, but you know it's there. <laughs> Clearly, it is there for all of you. So happy anniversary. 
<laughs> and if you have any questions, please feel free to email us at info at gracenola.org and you know where to find our leadership team and our redevelopment team. And I need to replace that slide, I just realized. Oh well, I will do that. Pastor Katie? Please stand as you feel comfortable. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope. Bless you now and always. Amen. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.